Creative Maths Including Statistics Learning Centre presents Understanding the Chi-Squared Test for Independence in a Two-Way Table. Ooh, catchy title. Hi, I'm Dr Nick from Creative Maths Including Statistics Learning Centre. This video builds on our video Analyzing Data in a Two-Way Table Including Chi-Squared Test. In that video we introduced the problem with Helen and her chocolate market research. If you have not seen that video, you should go and watch it now so that this video will make sense. You can click on the icon in the top right hand corner of the screen. As part of her analysis, Helen input the data from the sample of 50 people and the computer calculated a p-value of 0.019. Helen rejected the null hypothesis and decided that there was evidence that there was a relationship between chocolate preference and gender back in the population of her 5,000 customers. So let's see where that p-value of 0.019 comes from. The way a chi-squared test works is that it quantifies the difference between what you would expect to happen if there was no relationship, that men and women have the same chocolate preference, and what you got from the sample data. Let's find out what the table would look like if there really was no relationship between gender and chocolate preference. We start with our data table and use the row and column totals and clean out the rest of the table. We wish to find the values that would fill the middle of this table if the two variables were independent. We are finding out what the table would look like if the men and the women in the sample had the same preferences. 23 out of 50 of the participants were men. So we would expect 23 out of 50, or 9.2 of the 20 dark chocolate lovers, to be men, and 27 out of 50, or 10.8 of them, to be women. As this is theoretical, it is okay to have fractions of people. We can check that our numbers are correct if the total still works. 9.2 plus 10.8 does equal 20. We do the same thing for the milk chocolate, and for the white chocolate. Here is what the table would look like if the chocolate preferences were the same for the men and the women. You can see that the numbers for the women are all a little bigger than the numbers for the men because our sample had a few more women than men. If the numbers had been equal, then the row values would also have been equal. Now we can compare the two tables. You can see that there is quite a difference. So if we were just using descriptive statistics, we would say that the men in our group preferred dark chocolate and the women in the group prefer milk chocolate. How the test works is that for each of the cells, we look at the difference between the observed value and the expected value. If we were going to do this by hand, which no one does, we would use the formula shown here. We find the difference between the observed value and the expected value, square it and divide by the expected value for each cell, then add them up. This formula is also useful for seeing if values are distributed as expected in different tests. This table shows the calculations. The arrows show where the numbers come from. The chi-squared statistic is 7.93. We now need to compare this with the theoretical chi-squared distribution to see how likely it is to get a value as large as this or larger by chance acting alone. The degrees of freedom are number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1, which equals 2. Just take my word on this one. I use Excel to find my probability value. I just have to tell you about this seriously cool way to do a chi-squared test in Excel or Google Sheets if you have your data in a table. First, put your table in the spreadsheet. I'm using Excel. Copy and paste the table as values and clean out the middle values. Now we want to fill up the middle of the table with the values we would get if gender and chocolate preference were independent. In the first cell we multiply the row total E9 by the column total B11 and divide by the grand total E11. You can do each of the cells by hand or you can put in absolute references with the dollar signs and copy across and down. This is the result and this shows the formulas. Now this is where the spreadsheet is so cool. You use the formula equals chi-squared dot test. You enter the actual or observed range and the expected range and the output is the p-value. We round it to 0 0.019, the same as what we got before. 
Usually, when we're doing a test for independence like this, we do not have the data in a table, but in raw form. We would get the statistical package to perform the chi-squared test. In case you're interested, the chi-squared distribution is a close relative of the normal distribution. It is a sum of squares of independent standard normal distributions, or Zs. It is named after the Greek letter chi, also sometimes called key in English. This video explained how the chi-squared test for independence works and accompanies the video analysing data in a two-way table including the chi-squared test. Subscribe to our channel and check out our website for more resources.